Okumura's boss fight in Royal is notorious among Persona fans as being so frustratingly hard compared to the original boss fight that people have either full on given up and picked up DLC Personas, or have raged to the point of asking the game developers to do the bye bye. But here's the thing what if I told you that this game isn't hard at all? That the entire combat system is so laughably simple that I could beat Okumura with just his sweet daughter. Can you beat the Okumura boss fight by only using Haru? Now, what exactly makes this boss fight so hard for people in the first place? See, Okumura's boss fight got a little rework in Royal. When he sends out his waves of workers, the player in their party must defeat all four of the workers in two turns. If not, the enemies will flee, and a fresh group of those same workers will be spawned in. This means that the party essentially has to burst down the four enemies, or they'll have to deal with them repeatedly. And for a casual player, I can understand the frustration a bit. Without prior knowledge to an enemy's weakness, it's all but impossible to put enough damage into them to defeat all of them at once. But wait, what's that? You do learn about the enemy's weaknesses beforehand? The entire premise of this palace is that it teaches you what you'll need to expect before the boss fight happens. The palace pits you against the waves of workers almost constantly before actually reaching Okumura so that you'll understand how to beat them before the boss fight. Granted, you won't actually know this the first time you fight Okumura, but by the second time you fight him, it should be easy money. So, how is this possible with just Haru? She only learns one type of magic ability, Psychic, and despite impressive stats, she's not like Joker, who we can train in a variety of ways up until this point. There's a lot of specific setups that we have to do in order to make this happen, so let me explain the rules and setup first. First, this run was done in normal mode. It is possible on hard mode, but you need to grind to an unreasonable level. Second, Haru's necessary level is 54. Okumura is level 43, so that's pretty high at this point, but it's not unreasonable, especially considering the experience the game floods you with. Third, you must have Ryuji's level 7 ability, insta-kill, unlocked by this point in the game. It's possible to do without it, but it would take at least another 30 hours to achieve. And finally, in this run, I used Messiah for Joker. He can't attack, and this was only to give him more endurance and healing. You can use whatever persona you'd like in this instance though. With the setup explained, it's time for the rules. First, the party is limited to only Haru and Joker. Second, only Haru may attack. And finally, Joker can heal the party. This is only so that I wouldn't have to restart every time Haru died, as she has no healing ability of her own. You could try this where only she can heal herself, and it's still possible, but it would take twice the amount of time. And I'm kinda lazy, so I'm not gonna do that. Now before we get started with the boss fight, a little preparation work is needed. Once I secure a route for the treasure, I leave the palace and head to Mementos. Since Haru's not level 54, I needed to grind to get there. This is why Ryuji's insta-kill ability is necessary, and the only reason I'll be speaking to him for the entire game. One-shotting enemies in Mementos not only saves a lot of time with fighting, but you'll also get more experience if you've taken advantage of Jose's ability to change the cognition and mementos. But why is level 54 the necessary level to grind to? At level 54, Haru learns Snipe, a passive ability that allows her gun skills to do 25% more damage. The only gun move she'll have at this point is Triple Down, which is an insanely strong ability that is 100% needed to win this fight. Once she's level 54, the only thing I can recommend is that you buy healing items so Joker can heal. My Joker is insanely buffed by this point, and I'm using Messiah, so it doesn't really matter. With the preparation done, we can begin the fight in Okumura's palace. My first attempt at this boss goes about as well as the standard Persona players. The first wave of enemies are no problem. I accidentally spammed Haru's psychic ability, but it wasn't really an issue. The second wave wasn't an issue either. These enemies are actually weak to Psychic, and Haru wipes them out clean. Even the third wave was an easy task, because Triple Down wipes every enemy off the map. With Snipe's 25% increased damage, 
Haru can finish off this wave in two hits. But this is where the fun stops and where the nightmare begins. The fourth wave of enemies is where they become too strong to die to Haru's triple down in two turns. There are a few ways out of this, but all of them require RNG. First, Haru can crit using triple down and that would give her another turn. Second, if Utabi uses her ability to buff the party's attack, then Haru will deal enough damage in two turns to defeat the fourth wave. Unfortunately, even if these things do happen, there's a chance that Okuma inflicts hunger on Haru, which lowers her attack damage immensely. Every time I got close to defeating the fourth wave, this exact thing happened. And by the 23rd minute, I decided to just cut my losses and restart the fight entirely. Going into my second attempt, I remembered something. I remembered that I had an item that buffed party attack for three turns. If I managed to use the item at the right time, that is, when the enemies get cycled out, then it would be possible to win. Ironically enough, the item wasn't even needed. On my second attempt, not only did I breeze through the first three waves again, but on the fourth wave, Futaba buffed the party's attack and Haru managed to land two back-to-back -back crits, getting through the fourth wave in just one turn. The fifth wave took a little bit of time as well. They're weak to Psychic, but have too much health to be beaten in two turns with only Psychic attacks. But if Haru knocks them down with Psychic first, and then uses Triple Down, she'll do much more damage, and can manage to beat the fifth wave in two turns. The final robot, the Chief Director, is actually pretty easy. Just spam Triple Down, and then guard when he uses Vegeta's Big Bang attack. He'll fall over eventually. After that, Robo Floof will try to fight you. If you just guard though, she'll explode without doing too much damage. With nothing left in the way, Okumura only takes one hit to beat, officially ending the casual player's nightmare. This entire boss fight is based on the player understanding the palace and its enemies so that they'll know what to do in the final fight. Is it easy? Not necessarily. But is it hard? Goodness no. Okumura's palace might be a bit of a jump in terms of difficulty, but give it some time, do your best, and avoid using the pay to win walking nuke that is Izanagi no Okami Pikuro. Hey, thanks for watching. I know this is a much shorter video than my usual challenge runs. I want to start doing these more often since it's much less recording and editing for me and so I can get more content to you guys. I'll still be doing full challenge runs, but tell me what you think of this challenge in the comments below. And uh, also like and subscribe please. <laughs> uh, yeah. Thank you all again, and I'll see you in the next one.